Love isn't a universal language, but pain is. I share this with you because in 2023, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people trying to grow their network on social media every single day, either to build a business, a social platform, authority, or just because they wanna have fun. Now, the reason why I wanted to express this and break it down to you is because when I first got into the social media industry, when I first downloaded Instagram and started to consume individual's content, I didn't connect with a lot of creators. I didn't connect with a lot of speakers, motivators, coaches. And it's because they all spoke from a place of love. They all spoke from a place of positivity. And even though I want you to be positive, even though I want you to speak to positive thoughts, positive affirmations, a positive life, you need to understand that love is not a universal language. Pain is. You see, people are cranking out content on a daily basis. I'm talking about two, three, five, 10, 15, 20 videos a week on some people's platforms. It is all over the place right now. And they're all coming from love. Now, coming from love can be defined a few different ways. It could be starting a line with positivity. It could be starting a line or a video with, buckle up, I'm about to ruffle some feathers. It could be starting a video or a line with, I don't mean to offend any of you, but you need to pay attention. You see, a lot of you guys utilize those opening statements. A lot of you guys try to approach the video with positivity because you want to be overly kind, but you also don't want to offend anyone. But what you don't understand is that again, there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other creators doing the exact fucking thing that you are right now. And you are now blending into the rest. And because you are too afraid to speak your mind, because you are too afraid to speak to pain, because you are too afraid to talk about things that need to be said, not only do you blend in, but you end up being forgotten. I'm gonna say it again. Love is not a universal language, but pain is. There are a lot of people that preach that love is a universal language, but let's look at it subjectively. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are left in garbage cans as soon as they're born, left in the doorstep of fire stations as soon as they're born, die before the age of 10, before they even understand what true unconditional love is. So you might think that love is a universal language. That's a world that we would all love to live in, but it's fucking not. And on the flip side, we have all understood what it's like to go through pain, whether it's physical or emotional, whether it was being broken up with by a spouse or stubbing your toe on the edge of the bed, going to the bathroom, we all have experienced pain. And the reason why it's so important to understand that, the reason why you need to understand the difference between talking to love and talking to pain is because the gateway between you and becoming relatable to your audience so you can build that business, build that following, or build that impact is relatability. It is pain. Relatability is the gateway between them hitting or not hitting that follow button, clicking by or not clicking by. You need to become relatable to them so they know you, like you, and trust you enough to give to you or at least support you. So you have to learn to speak to fucking pain. You need to learn to trigger emotion. You need to learn to speak about the shit that nobody actually wants to open up about. And we can do this in multiple different ways, but I wanna focus on two specifically to give you some actionable information. The first way is talking about a deep emotional story. You see, I used to be an iron worker addicted to Percocets. When I was 22 years old, I was fully addicted to Percocets. I would eat four to seven plus Percocets a day, meaning on a chill day, where I was very relaxed and I wasn't in my head and I didn't feel like shit, I would only eat around four. I would start the day with chugging a king size Red Bull and chewing up a Percocet and then I'd go to work as an iron worker. Climbing up 60 feet of steel, moving beams around, driving machinery. I'm not proud of it, but that's my truth. Now on a bad day, I would eat seven plus. Now the reason why I say plus is because I used to carry around a hundred in my pocket at all times, no exaggeration. So I would eat seven that I would remember and then I would turn into this hazy forgetful person where everything was just a fucking blur. So my day would start with me chewing up a Percocet and drinking a king size Red Bull and then I would proceed to sniff them on the beams, chew them up, down them, and then next thing you know, I didn't even understand how much I was eating until I counted my pills the next day because after I was done my regular 10 to 12 hour work shift I'd go to the bar and binge drink until 12 p.m. 
This got so fucking bad that I was 100% lost in my life. I was $20,000 in debt, depressed, angry, frustrated, disgusted with myself, pushed all my friends away from me, neglected my family, and had absolutely fucking nobody. The reason why I express that to you is because even though you might know nothing about being addicted to drugs, even though you might have never dealt with addiction and pain like I have in that manner, you might know what it's like to hit rock bottom. I hit my rock bottom. When I got super, super fucked up one night with my friends, we went out to a Halloween party. And even though we weren't dressing up, it was all about dancing and partying at the house. Now I had eaten around five Percocets before I got to the party and nobody had even known that. Then we proceeded to get super fucking drunk and I was chugging absinthe straight out the bottle. I remember at my second chug, everything was gone. And apparently that night, not only did I make a fucking buffoon of myself, dancing around, stumbling around, trying to pick fights with people I didn't even fucking know because I was trying to be some ego-headed piece of shit, but then when I got embarrassed while I was all messed up, I ran out of the house with no shoes on and walked back to my apartment. Went to jump in the bed, missed the bed, and smashed my fucking head on the nightstand. Landed on the ground, woke up in the morning, and was like, what happened? And then my friend told me what happened. The next day, he's like, Guess what? I've actually got a video of you super fucked up. Do you want to see it? And instantly, as soon as I heard those words leave his mouth, I was overwhelmed with embarrassment, disgust, frustration, because I allowed myself to get into a situation where I couldn't control my actions. So no, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want anybody to see it. I was even angry that he had the fucking video. Well, he proceeded to play it anyways. Even though I wouldn't watch the video, I could hear how I sounded. And I fucking hated myself in that moment. I had hit rock bottom. And even though I wasn't able to change instantly, over time, I started to make little changes. I started to be aware of my embarrassment every time I would pop a pill. I started to be aware of my embarrassment, the frustration I felt that day I heard the video every time I got fucking drunk. I hit my rock bottom. And then I started to slowly change my life. Now again, I share that with you because even though you might have not had a drinking problem like me, you might have not been addicted to drugs like me, even though you might have not dealt with abuse like me like I dealt with when I was a kid, you can relate to the fucking pain. Because let's be real, rock bottom pain feels the same no matter what it's like. Whether it's through a breakup, whether it's through a drug addiction, whether it's through physical violence, rock bottom is rock fucking bottom. Pain is relatable. Love isn't always relatable. So understanding how to express your story in a way that makes you relatable online helps you connect with the masses. It will help you get people to know, like, and trust you so they will either buy or support you in the long run. The second way is learning how to speak to pain in the content itself. Let's say you're online as a fitness coach, a personal trainer, and you want to speak to people that are 50 pounds overweight. Guess what? The content that you produce isn't about the 50 pounds. It's about how they feel when they look in the mirror and they see the 50 pounds. It's about how they feel when they put on their favorite pair of jeans and they don't fit properly. So you need to learn how to speak to that. Instead of starting the video being like, here's three tips to help you lose 50 pounds, start the video and be like, do you look in the mirror and hate what you fucking see? If every time you put on that favorite pair of jeans, do you self-talk yourself into self-hatred? Aren't you sick of not being able to wear the clothes that you fucking love? You see, I'm starting the video with actual pain, feelings, things that people have said when you are being generic because you're trying to lead with love just to solve the problem because you don't want to fucking offend anybody. The moral of the story is that love is not a universal language, but pain is. Not everybody knows what it's like to experience unconditional love. Not everybody knows what it's like to experience love and not everybody knows what it's like to live a positive life their entire life. But we all know pain. We all can relate to pain. I was abused when I was a kid, mentally and physically. I ended up trying to leave my house at 14 and even though I didn't disconnect from my family 100%, I was barely home. And if I did come home, we fought until all times of the night to the degree where my baby brothers had to be the bridge between my parents and I. Couch surfing, struggling with money, 20,000 plus dollars in debt, struggling with addiction as long as I can remember. Struggling to find my purpose. The only thing that I thought I was good at was drinking and partying. So my confidence was always found at the bottom of a bottle. And now I'm over 620 days sober from alcohol and I'm over eight years sober from Percocets. 
You might not know what it's like to struggle with that shit, but you know the pain. If you wanna become relatable online, build an audience, build a business, better your relationships, build better friendships, learn how to express vulnerability, become relatable to them, speak to pain, open up, use your brain, stop trying to sound analytical, scientific in all your breakdowns and just be human. Love is not a universal language, but pain fucking is.